For this podcast, I want to tell you about a thought-provoking post I recently stumbled on in the earlyretirementextreme.com forum. It might have caught my attention because I read it the day after I watched someone let slip a few details about their retirement plans while at a dinner party. I'll tell you about that little slip at the end of this podcast. What this combination of experiences has had me wondering about is whether I need to be especially cautious about revealing details of my financial independence plans to friends and family. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you probably already know about the EarlyRetirementExtreme.com forum. What I like about the Early Retirement Extreme Forum is that a lot of the participants there really push the limits of FIRE concepts. A lot of bright, unorthodox people hang out there. Of course, that's a polite way of saying that Early Retirement Extreme is where some of the nerdiest, wackiest FIRE fans tend to gather. So here's what I read there. Someone with the username of S-Class posted to the forum about an experience they had with family members. It was shocking and warrants some reflection because of what we can learn from it. Over about a year, S-Class had been explaining his fire plans to his father. During these discussions, he showed his father the math of how fire works. He even showed his father his net worth. His father was fascinated and that's not what usually happens in stories about sharing fire plans with family members or friends. The father was so pleasantly surprised by what S-Class had achieved that he subsequently decided to give his other two children an inheritance equal to S-Class's net worth. This left S-Class with no inheritance at all. Now, opinions from forum participants about the father's decision and the son's reaction varied. Many people concluded that the father had acted within his rights, but had also acted like an asshole. But that's not really what was most educational to me. What was most educational to me was this quote from S. Class's original post. The lesson? Never, ever tell your family what you're doing. Just like all the posts say. I know. My ego got the best of me. That sounds overly harsh, but is his basic admonition right? Never. Ever. Tell your family what you're doing. Should you keep your fire goals and progress as private as possible? I think there are a lot of reasons to keep your fire plans private. It's especially important to keep your net worth private, and not just because it could affect gifts from your parents. Here are four reasons we should keep our financial independence goals and progress as private as possible. First, perhaps you've noticed that financial literacy in the United States and many other countries is low. If people catch hints about your numbers, you can't expect them to understand those numbers. Here's an example. A million bucks is commonly viewed as a large sum of money. And of course, it is a large sum of money for many purposes. But many of us in the financial independence retire early community know that a retiree or somebody who is approaching retirement with a million dollar portfolio may plan to withdraw in their first year of retirement only 3 to 4% of that portfolio. Now let's compute that. 3 to 4% of a million dollar portfolio is 30 to $40,000. 30 to $40,000. Let's make it $35,000. $35,000 per year as a household income would be a lower middle class household income. Why do I say that? Because at the time I'm recording this, the median household income in the United States is $61,000 per year. $35,000 per year is typically not a household income that would allow for luxurious living. So imagine how perplexing it is to someone who hasn't read what we've read who hasn't listened to podcasts like this, when they know somebody has a million dollars but refuses to live luxuriously and lives frugally instead. 
The generally low level of financial literacy among the populace can play out in other negative ways as well. People who misunderstand what your wealth, what your portfolio value actually means may have all kinds of unrealistic expectations. They may expect you to participate in things that you can't really afford. Now, when I say you can't afford, what I really mean is that those things would conflict strongly with your goals. Take a two-week vacation to Switzerland, for example. A millionaire could spend their money on that, but if a millionaire is trying to make their million dollars support their lifestyle for decades to come, that millionaire may need to think about themselves as living a rather frugal lifestyle that economists might recognize as closer to lower middle class. Typically, lower middle class people would not spend the sums necessary to go on a long vacation to an expensive but beautiful country like Switzerland. So people's expectations can be really miscalibrated to the reality of your portfolio. Another unrealistic expectation people may have if they're catching hints about your wealth is they may expect you to provide loans or large gifts. That may lead to all kinds of misunderstandings and conflict. They may also perceive you when you're living a frugal lifestyle in spite of having a robust portfolio. They may perceive you as being stingy or selfish, unkind, perhaps even depressed because it looks to them like you're not enjoying the money you have. These misunderstandings can stem from their lack of education about what your portfolio value really means and why your portfolio needs to be protected with frugal living. Reason number two. At times, it is gratifying to explain how you're different and why you live the way that you do. But at other times, it is exhausting to explain to members of the majority group your lifestyle as a member of a minority group. It can just be easier to keep our goals and our financial independence progress private so that we're not having to explain over and over again to people who are having a hard time understanding our goals and experiences. Reason number three, your commitment to things may be called into question if people learn about your financial independence goals and progress. Have you ever noticed that in work settings, people rarely reveal their retirement date months and months in advance? Most people I've worked with have revealed their expected retirement date as late as possible to their colleagues. There are a lot of reasons for this, but one of them, I think, is that people who are about to retire don't want to feel dismissed by their colleagues. They also don't want to have to answer their endless questions. When people know you're about to pull the plug, they begin to wonder how committed you are and Maybe not just wonder, but seriously doubt how committed you are to whatever the project is in question. Now, this doesn't just apply in work settings. If your family learns that you're planning to retire in a short amount of time, they may assume that you're about to move away or that you're about to adopt such a different lifestyle that you'll be less available for family commitments, whether it's taking care of aging parents or participating in family traditions, if they know you are going to reach retirement sooner, they may have a lot of doubts about whether you are committed to family activities. So it's a concern in the workplace. It's a concern in family settings. It may be a concern in other social settings. And this is one more reason why it may be simpler to just keep your financial independence goals and progress private. Reason number four, if you talk about your financial independence goals and progress with friends and family members, they may think you are bragging. And they may be right. 
Keep in mind that people don't just brag about their net worth, which is especially tacky, at least in American culture. People also brag about their wisdom and their self-discipline. That's something I think we should be on guard about, because as implied in the S-class quote toward the beginning, sometimes we overshare for egotistical reasons. Now, we tell ourselves that's not why we're, we're sharing this information about how we're getting out of debt and how we've reached certain markers in our path to financial independence. We imagine that it's for other reasons, and probably there are a mix of motivations behind this oversharing. But unseemly motivations, like egotistical motivations, can be really hard to detect before it's too late. Sometimes it's after we have said things to people that we realize, ooh, that sounded rather egotistical. And maybe that's part of the reason that I shared it, and I wish I hadn't. It's probably safer if we just don't take the risk of saying things that can seem boastful. So there are four reasons to keep your fire plans, and especially your net worth, as private as possible. Did I miss any reasons? Let us know in the comments. I should say that I think there's little harm in posting anonymously about your financial independence progress online. This is a very common practice in the financial independence community, and it, it tells me that for many people it is important to celebrate the markers or milestones on the path to financial independence. Yes, getting out of debt is a big deal. So is hitting your first $100,000 in net worth. And if you're compelled to share such information, to celebrate it with other people, it's a lot safer to share it anonymously online than to share it with friends and family in real life. Now, what was that slip I noticed at the dinner party that I referenced earlier? Well, it wasn't a bad slip, especially because of who was there and who wasn't there. But in the midst of a conversation about job frustrations, I heard someone reveal they would be eligible for their employer's retirement benefits starting at age 55. They were exploring whether there was a way they could resign sooner and still maintain eligibility for those benefits. To a fire weirdo like me, this signaled the possibility that the person's portfolio had been doing well. Shortly thereafter, they casually remarked that at a certain age, the performance of the stock market matters a whole lot more than the size of one's income. Again, those statements were far from egregious, and the statements didn't seem especially egotistical or risky given who was present. But I realized that if I had said them among certain friends or family members, I might be worrying now about how those statements, how that information might travel and how it might be interpreted. I'm just the kind of person who likes to prevent frustrating conversations rather than having to deal with them, often unsuccessfully, later. Now we have to acknowledge that not all financial behaviors can be hidden. Anyone who has known you for a few years has at least some sense of how frugal you are those behaviors are observable. And in many cultures, it's not hard to estimate what somebody's income is. So it's a good idea to assume that some conversations about frugal habits or retirement plans or beliefs about money are going to arise inevitably. It's best for us to prepare for those conversations with replies that we're satisfied with and are unlikely to lead to oversharing in the spur of the moment. Now, what do you think? Did S Class overshare with his wickedly unfair father? What do you think about keeping your fire goals and progress private? I hope you'll share your opinions and questions in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about the path to financial independence, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and enjoy the other podcasts. Thanks.